Have a look at the stitching details on this tiny cricket ball valve cap. Which one of these do you think was printed with a resin printer? Well actually, neither of them. You didn't see that coming, did you? I'm sure I had you fooled. But let's dive into the new Cura 5 and see what it has to do with these two prints. I've had my eye on what's now called Cura 5 for a while actually, as I've been using the Arachne Beta 2 version for quite a while. In fact, if you were keen-eyed enough, you may have spotted it in one of the past 10 or so videos that I made. However, nobody in the comments said a single word, so that really shows how the changes are very much under the hood rather than visual. There is a new UI though in this particular release. This is brand new for this version, and it has changed slightly from what I was seeing with Arachne. It's very, very new, and there's still some quirks, but I have no doubt that they'll be ironed out in due course. But the real changes are in the back end. Cura is a software of two parts. The front end is the bit most users interact with, but when you click Slice, that's done by the part called Cura Engine. And this is the part that was codenamed Arachne until now, where it forms Cura 5. So given that most of Cura looks the same to the casual eye, what's really new? Actually, something quite big. Firstly, my impression is that the Arachne engine was rewritten from the ground up, something that becomes quite evident once you start slicing and comparing previews side by side. Take this very simple box that I've thrown together in FreeCAD as an example. When you design something with thin walls like a box, you would normally consider the thickness of the box's walls as a multiple of line widths for best printing, so that you get a whole number of printed lines as the walls. In this example, I create walls 1.6mm thick. This allows four print lines total to make up the walls of the box with no gap. But with Cura 5, this just doesn't have to be a consideration anymore. Look what happens if I change the wall sizes and I slice. While Cura 4 did seem to have some limited ability to vary the width of the infill, this is actually totally new. The line width here is completely variable. There's more to this though. If I draw your eye to a new setting called minimum line width, this is also what I'm really excited about. I don't have all the information yet to explain what these settings do in detail, and the tooltip cuts off to, inherently also what, but from my initial tests it seems like the minimum line width setting allows you to set the smallest line width that you want Cura to consider when making these variable line width calculations. Which leads us to this, the details on this cricket ball valve cap are just not possible to get in Cura 4. And we could do the same comparison with a Benchy, just as Ultimaker did in their own presentation. Cura 4 gives up after a certain size reduction. It just leaves whole grey areas where there's no... no print. Uh, but in fact, you can carry on printing below that, and Cura 5 will let you. And... it will print. Bear in mind also that these examples I've shown you so far, all of them, were all printed on a 0.4 nozzle size. It would appear on the face of it that this version of Cura is going to be a huge game changer when it comes to details. If you print small things on FDM or large things with small details, you should really be getting excited about this. Now, while I have found the new engine to be fairly stable, I mentioned I've been using it for a while, I think I should probably warn you about a couple of things before you dive in and start using it. Firstly, I gather there's going to be a wait for plugins to be available. If you use any plugins in Cura 4, for example, I use the Octoprint plugin, and I also use the thumbnail one for the MKS Robin Nano, and even the settings guide at the moment, these are not available yet. Secondly, as I mentioned, the UI seems to be still quite buggy. None of these are stopping me from using it right now. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning as well that you can absolutely run multiple versions of Cura side by side simultaneously, so there's really no reason not to try it out right now. Well that is all I wanted to cover right now because I'm kind of busy doing the next five or six videos right now. I'll give you some eye candy though before I finish. How cool is this? Some of you might know what it is. So did you download Cura 5 yet? If so, what do you think? Let me know in the comments and I will hopefully see you in the next couple of days with the next video. Thank you for watching.